Now there's quite a lot to get underneath the skin of the new 4D Transit. So the best person I could find to talk to is Andy, who is the chief program engineer on this. And he knows everything <laughs> there right. is to know about this. People will just think this is just a transit with yeah. a battery in it, mm. but there's a lot more to just simply For electrifying sure. a transit. Sure. So let us talk us through exactly what has changed with this. What makes this model what it is? What makes it what it is? Okay, so we'll start here at the back because this is this is actually <clears throat> kind of where the where a lot of the, the really important stuff is. Um, so what you can see here, all of the e transits are rear-wheel drive. Yeah. Um, you know, for a bunch of reasons. You know, I'm sure you understand. You know, for a transit, fully laden, get a lot better traction from the rear wheels. Um, and particularly, you know, this vehicle has fantastic traction because you've got the yep. better part of half a ton of uh, battery sitting right sit down low. Sit nice low and by the rear axle. Yeah. So this is a 68 kilowatt hour battery. 68 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Usable energy, yeah. Um, it's a bit more than that in total capacity because yes. there's always a little bit of headroom that you can't use. Um, so yeah, what we have here, we've got, this is what we call the, the PDU. It's the powertrain drive unit. We love an acronym. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's essentially within this, this big aluminium casting, you've got the motor, transaxle, differential, all one unit. Super compact. Super compact. I mean, you can see yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's super compact. This little box on the top here, is something we call an ISC. Forgive me, I can't remember what it stands for, but it's basically, it's an inverter. Isn't okay. It? And what that does is take this- Takes the power from the this, battery. This massive cable yes, here yeah. is battery, is energy out of the battery. Yeah. Um, 400 volt DC. That turns it into some AC that yeah. the motor can then use to spin. Um, obviously the motor you've got here, uh, we had a question from one of the guys earlier. It's a 198 kilowatt, 430 Newton meter torque. Peak. Instantaneous torque as Instantaneous well. Instantaneous torque, yeah. yep. Um, we offer it as both 198 kilowatt and 135 kilowatt for the customers that don't quite want uh, yeah. so much Doesn't, performance. Yes, yeah. Um, and there is a range difference then between the two motors? Uh, I mean, not really. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, the only side story is, of course, it, it's all about how heavy your right foot is. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you don't get, you don't get, if, if you don't use the performance, and there are, I can talk you through in the front, there are some ways, if you have the higher power one, the little eco mode, yes, yeah. which actually, anytime eco mode is active, even if you have the high power one, you're restricted to the 135 kilowatt. Yeah, okay. Um, this beastie yeah. is one of the largest high pressure die cast aluminum castings that Ford have ever done. Um, it's hollow, so yeah. weight, and it forms, it's in a couple of pieces that are then MIG welded together, but it, it forms the frame that acts as the interface between the traditional transit structure yes. and the, in, the mounting for the motor. You can see there's four fully yeah. isolated MVH belts yes. there that, yeah. that handle all the torque reactions, etc. And also the new independent rear suspension. Why an independent rear suspension? Well, two things mainly. Obviously, you want the drive shafts. And one of the big things here is we wanted to make sure, you know, we didn't impede on the load space okay. because the transit is all about of course, yeah. what you can carry yeah. in the back. Yeah. So the last thing you want is the motor or any of the other business starting to put lumps and bumps in the, in the bottom back of the vehicle. So we did a very, very compact semi-trailing arm suspension. Um, again, with, an, with a cast, high pressure die cast arms. It is to the best of our, well, we know <laughs> it is the heaviest duty independent rear suspension Ford has ever done. Really? Okay. By, yeah. Yeah. by some margin. We believe it may well be the heav heaviest duty independent suspension anyone has ever done. There's some debate about the military Humvee. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's kind of, but that's the territory you're so in. So we're comparing the new Ford Transit. <laughs> yeah. do, maybe we could do a twin test with, with an actual yeah. Humvee. But, it, but basically, you know, because you've got a yeah. four, and, four and a quarter ton yeah. GVM, uh, core spring rear suspension. I and mean, you've driven it earlier, you know, yeah. the ride comfort refinement is outstanding. Yeah, we drove it, it had 400 kilos of weight yeah. in the back of it and it was beautiful, very, um, very smooth. It, yeah. it, you know, it, it's an engineering challenge, you know, these are very special custom designed springs because you've got a pretty short package, Yes. Yeah. a very big load, so you know, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a really, really nice unit, performs really well. So then there's obviously the main, the, the, <laughs> the main the, the, the thing main, the people main will talk about with this vehicle so, so this is, is the battery. This is the battery itself, water-cooled, yes. and you'll actually note 
And these are some cooling lines going okay. to the inverter as well. Yes, yeah. Because again, so it shares the same same, same cooling yeah. system. Um, the one the feeds for the battery are in the front there under the cab, and you have a a, a cold plate underneath yes. the cells okay. that provides the cooling. Um, so how difficult was it to get this battery to fit into uh, I a mean, transit? I mean, this particular, the chassis cab, yeah. was the most challenging. Okay. A little bit easier on the van right. we have next to us here, um, because obviously you can see on a chassis cab, that's the most outward yes. part of the vehicle. <laughs> yes. The yeah. battery is quite a lot wider. Yes, so you can see it, it sticks, I don't know, it, it's about a foot. It's on about a foot side. each side, yeah. 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 Um, and there's so, a lot of really heavy duty. Correct. Uh, and and this, it, you'll like this. This is, um, for, for those of us of a certain age, yeah. um, our, our vehicle architecture engineers christened this the Battlestar Galactica bracket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it, 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 yeah, essentially, so the, these provide the mounting to, to the main chassis rails. Yeah that the battery then hangs off. You'll note, and you can see it on your side as well, there's a big, some big aluminium extrusions yes, that yeah. provide the crash protection for the battery okay. yeah. to stop any intrusions from you know, trees, poles, yeah, so vehicles. So that's, that's all, all, that, all this extra. So sen essentially everything yeah. outside of this, the top yeah, cover so of the battery, these guys here. that's yeah. all energy absorbing crash structure yeah. along the full length of the battery. Yeah. Um, and the, so just in terms of when the battery is mounted on, the. The chassis itself is the same as other is the same. So we, we've added some additional holes and sure, yeah, bolt so things, where everything needs to mount. But, but, it's but effectively, I could take a diesel, yes, and come and mount this to, to it, it. Okay, because yeah. we've, we've we've added it to everything. For, yes, yeah, yeah. For body yeah. This isn't a, a bespoke chassis. No, it's not so a so bespoke speak. chassis. This it's an adaptation. Um, yes. Yeah, and so as you say, within within this this um, there's an aluminium tray as we call it, which all the cells, so all the cells sit. So you have in. the aluminum tray, cooling material, yeah, and then a series of arrays, which are groups of cells. The cells are pouch cells. Yes. The liquid pouch cells. Uh, I want to say 76 milliamp hour cells. And there's, I think it's 196 of them. I okay. Don't, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that order. You do the maths. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's that order in there that, that deliver the whole battery. Um, so then the and all the electronics that control the battery are, are either within the case. This. Some, some okay, of it's in yeah. this lump. Yeah. Some of them are in various bits. And also all the, all the high voltage contactors and fusing and all the rest of it is all contained within the battery itself. When it comes to charging the battery then, the charger is at Char the front, front. Yes. Which is a pretty convenient place to put the, the charger port. It's right yeah. in front here. I mean, we've... And we've got CCS, so you've got... Both you've got AC and DC. Full CCS as well. two, AC DC. Yeah. Um, so you on on the top one here, which yeah. is your AC charging, we can take eleven kilowatt if your set, your market if you, if set up for is yeah. set up yeah. for it. So which typically is the three phase markets yes. that have that, yeah. that level of supply. The onboard charger, which is going to be difficult to see, but <laughs> is one of the it's the biggest box at the bottom there. Yes, yeah. So this one. Yeah. Um, so there's not, there is still stuff under the, the bonnet. For anyone who's wondering, there, wondering, is, there, there is still reason still to have to lift up the bonnet, yeah, so but not for an engine. No, but so that, that's that's an 11 kilowatt onboard charger. So yeah. that will take, the if power you've got it, coming the power is coming in from there, turn it into you know, 230 volt, yeah. 11 kilowatt AC to 400 volt DC to charge the battery. The little box on top of it that you can see a lot more clearly is for the pro power on board yes yeah so that then provides the 2.3 kilowatts of 230 volt 50 hertz so if you want to power AC, or whatever power, else. your power yeah, saw yeah. or whatever it is which um, we can we, see we, in, we can do in, a demo in, in that vehicle yeah, yeah. Uh, so in, in, the, in the back there is you can boil yep. the kettle or charge your power to yeah. your batteries yeah. or and like know, you know 2.3 kilowatts that's that's a decent chunk of power yeah you know, it'll power pretty much everything you you want to throw at it okay yeah or you're like on a work site or whatever yes so, yeah yeah um with the dc charging um again there's another little box under there that that controls all that but we got up to up to 115 kilowatts of dc at peak obviously at that peak. changes that's depending it. on I mean, there's a whole you're charging um, and yeah, yeah when you're yeah. doing it but that's the peak so that's the peak and that means that you know if you're coming from i think it's we quote 15 percent charge yeah. to 80 so percent I think it's 34 minutes, so okay. it's half an hour or so. So if you can find somewhere with a decent charge, that, that's yeah, quick enough. That's quick enough. Pop you in, get your coffee, do your bit exactly. of paperwork, or check your phone you, or whatever, and then you're, you're good to I go mean, again. In terms of the, 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 you know, the way we sized everything, obviously the AC charging is one of the goals here, and one, one of the reasons 
the yeah. battery is the size it is and the charger is what we've got way up um is uh you want to make sure that you can charge the vehicle overnight yes effectively. yeah so within yeah. the kind of eight nine hours that a vehicle might be sat idle overnight yeah when it's not in use not in you use. can have it then charge have, have it so charged. and that's the thing so because that's got 11 kilowatt if you've got three phase at your yeah. warehouse or your workshop yeah. or anything like that you can just have it on there and then you come in the morning it's fully charged correct there's preconditioning with this. Can there, you? There, with, there is the, absolutely the so. so from the, in winter, you can from the uh, have your have your cabin nice and toasty before you nice, get in first nice thing in the morning. So it does it does two things. So from the from the big twelve inch screen on the dash, you or indeed from the telematics when you yes, talk to yeah. those guys, you can set your departure time for the morning. You can tell it do you want my cabin cool, warm, or hot. Yep. <laughs> uh, and it will do a number of things. So while you're on the plug, yes. It will use the energy from the grid, not the battery. Yeah. So you're still got 100. You're still 100% yeah. charge. It will warm, cool, or otherwise the cabin, and it will also warm the battery. Yes. So that the battery is at its operating optimum operating temperature when before you're ready you go. to go. Okay. So if it is if it is really cold, and we've yes. done some obviously trials up in Montana and the northern Michigan states and Minnesota mm. and things where. I mean, it, it gets pretty. It, it gets, gets pretty, it, pretty it, cold. It gets to the point where the Fahrenheit number is the same as the Celsius number. Yeah, okay, <laughs> <laughs> minus thirty-eight. Yeah, cold. Um, and in those kind of conditions, just keeping the battery or getting the battery up to temperature can take an enormous amount of energy. Okay. So preconditioning becomes hugely important. So it's not just about having a toasty, no, no, toasty driver it's seat. Very much, it's also yeah, very and much that's something as well that people, particularly depending on where where they're working, yeah, can have a massive difference yeah, in I mean, terms of their driving here in, here range in Europe, that day you know, then. Scotland, yeah. Anyway, you know, if you, any tip, I mean, really, in from the battery point of view, once you get below, certainly below freezing, yeah, kind of below about five degrees, you start to see that there's a real benefit to preconditioning the battery and yeah. warming it up off the grid yeah, yeah. rather than using the, the battery's energy to warm itself up, yeah. which it'll do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, but you're giving will. yourself a head start. Yeah, correct. And, correct. You're, and this is, I suppose, efficiency is a big thing mm. with electric vehicles that, that people probably maybe need to get their heads around that you can have this car already doing some work mm before you actually start your work because it's gonna have itself warmed up and then yeah. it's, it's like somebody, you can't instantly warm up a diesel engine, for example, no. but with no. this, you can have it run, you can have it effectively running and warming up, yes. ready to go down ready for to days. Go. And I mean, actually, it's one of the, uh, you were mentioning efficiency, a couple of things. So in terms of cabin comfort, one, one nice thing is of course, because what we're using is a high voltage electric heater, Yeah. You do get instant heat. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. 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 yeah it's you're, like not, you're, you're not relying on. No, you're not relying on everything else to warm. And, 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 yeah. uh, so you, you actually can get instant heat out of the heater. But I, again, one of the sort of lesser known facts in the EV world, or the things that people, have, customers have got to adjust to, is in terms of driver comfort, a much more efficient way to achieve a comfortable condition for the driver in a cold day is the heated seats. Yes. Rather than. Heating the air in the yeah, cabin. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 So actually, yeah. heated warm, seats warm the driver up. Warm the driver, than not warm not all the space around. You know, a huge if you've got big one of these up. with no bulkhead in it, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. wow, that's it's, a lot of yeah, yeah, cubic yeah. meters of air you're trying to warm yeah. up. So, and, and same with um, demisting your window. Yes. Yeah. The quick clear heated electric windscreen yeah. is a much more efficient yes, way yeah. than again blowing quantities yeah. and of warm air. It's one of the great things about preconditioning as well is the fact that. Even with normal electric cars, the fact yeah. you get to be that bit more smug when you watch yes. your neighbours in the morning, <laughs> scraping in the, the morning, ice scraping off, it yeah. up, and you're just sitting there having your having your tea or Correct. your coffee so in the no. morning. So uh, as well, the other thing about cabinets, there's a lot less vibration with for sure yes. any with an electric van as well, mm. and that obviously has longer term benefits for the drivers as well. That it's just a little bit less strain on yeah. them physically. And I mean, I, I always tell people, you know, if you can, I was saying, I mean, if you can imagine you're in a depot delivery or whatever business it yeah. is and you've got a, a mixed fleet and there's some diesels there and some electric vehicles I know which one I'm after the key for yeah because <laughs> yeah. like you say just the refinement the quietness the lack of vibration mm. no clutch pedal yeah <laughs> you know I mean just yeah. no gear changing no gear changing yeah. it is so much easier to drive yeah um, you've got with the regen braking yeah you know, if depending on how you want to drive it, you and you set it in L mode or, or use the use the brake pedal to increase the regen, you can almost drive it with one foot. You know, you, you yeah. So with that, the re that's the one thing that people often talk about with regular EV yeah. cars is 
one pedal braking mm. or regenerative braking. For those that don't know, what can this van right. do in terms of how it recovers energy when you're out? Yeah. Like, will it sail or will it right. always so have it, a braking force applied? It, it's, a, it's a pretty smart system, actually. That, so what happens is if, if you're in D, the yeah. drive on the, on the transmission, and you... Which maybe we can show people yeah, the inside show, the, because it's, the it's a little bit easier then to, mm. to see how it's all set up. Yeah. So I don't know if you can... So you can see here, if you're in D on the little rotary shifter, then, and you're, and you're driving along, and you lift off the throttle, you will get some regen braking. How much you get is where the cleverness kicks in. So the vehicle knows the grade load, so how steep the hill you're coming up or down is. Obviously it knows what speed you're doing. And it actually is a little bit, you know, so, and, it, and it knows how you've been driving learns a bit about your driving style so and it will give you a level of regen intended to give you the maximum efficiency so very close to sailing basically fairly yeah. fairly minimal um, level of regen if you are in L mode which is this button in the middle the transmission and the vehicle behaves much more like you would on a, a classic torque converter with a ice engine yes yeah with L as yeah. in a low gear. Yeah. So what you get is a lot of engine braking, you know, mm. but regen, re and you actually get, it, it's set to provide at any given vehicle speed load conditions, the maximum retardation that we can do within the stability limits of the vehicle. So effectively, the most you can get without risk of the back end. Sure, yeah, yeah. Go. coming around to meet you. Coming around yeah. to meet you. Uh, <laughs> and plenty more than enough to mean that you have to trigger the brake lights. Yes, yeah. Right. So, so those are the two extremes, and then the one that's actually I find it, it's really because we had a whole debate about you know how do you give the customer the option of controlling the level of regen they see, and after much debate, actually the calibration guys came up with I think was a very elegant answer, super intuitive, and it's you use the brake pedal. Mm. So you may you may well have not even noticed when you were driving earlier, but if you lift off and you decide. Actually, I want to slow the vehicle down a little bit more. If you tap the brake pedal, you'll get more regen. If you tap it again, yeah. you'll get more regen again. Okay. Yeah. Up to the maximum yes, L. Yeah. So a couple of two or three little taps on the brake pedal, depending on how fast you're going, and the, of course, you yeah. get gradually more regen. And it, you almost do it without thinking about it because you just, oh, I'd like to slow down a bit more. I tap the brake pedal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the vehicle knows that's what you're trying to achieve. So yeah. And you're then obviously getting yeah. energy rather than just wasting energy. Mm. You're actually getting it back into the battery then yeah. as well. So that's. And, and, uh, but again, you know, we were talking about you know, efficiency with EVs and things. One of the bits that, again, it, it's not. It is obvious, but it's perhaps a little bit counterintuitive. Mm. Is you know, people talk a lot about regen braking and one pedal drive and all this kind of stuff. And, and as I say, in L mode, we're pretty close to one pedal. Yeah. It, it you know. Breaks for emergencies. Sure, yeah, kind of, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but you don't actually want to regen braking. Mm. You know, in terms of having the maximum efficiency, keeping your range the maximum, what you really want is to coast sail yes. as much as possible. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, anticipate lift off well ahead of that traffic of light that's about yeah, to change yeah, colour yeah, and all yeah, the rest yeah. of it. So if you see it's a green light, if it's been a green light for a long time. It's probably going to change color. Um, yeah. And we, we, I was telling some guys earlier, we, we did a, with some of the early pre production units, we did some long distance drives from our test track in Belgium, Lommel. Mm. Spent the day, you know, around that, that corner where you change countries, France. Okay, yeah. Belgium, yeah, Holland, yeah. they're all right there. And we spent some time driving around. And we had myself and one of the calibrations driving who tended to like to drive, as I was saying, with using the brake pedal yeah. only when I had to anticipate as much as yes, possible yeah, coast yeah. and some of our vehicle dynamics guys in the other vehicle who tend to like to use the brake a lot more and, and love to leave it in L mode with the max regen at the end of the day we were about 10 to 15 percent less energy used okay than they were That's so if you can yeah. if the traffic conditions allow yes you can you don't want to be using too much regen yes okay obviously if you're in a lot of steep grades or you're in an inner city environment where it's stop go all the time yeah yeah there's it's a lot more relaxing to, to use the l mode sure yeah, yeah and that's yeah. then the trade-off between efficiency and yeah, you know, yeah. driver comfort and, yeah uh, 
Yeah. And I guess that's something that people will learn yeah. as they use these vans. Surprisingly and, quickly, yeah, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and I'm sure you know you drove one earlier. Yeah. You get used to driving it really quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. really easy. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's such a great insight into the transit. There is so much to take into account with this. You'll find a full review on us on our website, which is completevan.ie. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. If you want to know more, you'll follow us on all the usual social channels. Thanks for watching.